Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another freezer meal video. I am super excited to be sharing a new freezer meal video with you today and I'm going to be sharing five keto slash low carb freezer meals that you can make in the upcoming months to stick to your New Year's resolutions. Now I've gotten a lot of comments from a lot of you that you'd like to see more keto and low carb recipes from me. So full disclaimer, we do not eat keto or low carb here. <laughs> and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I am a full-time working mom and I have two kids and a husband and I like to post all kinds of content around home and food, freezer meals included and meal prepping included. And so if you're new, I hope that you stick around. But anyway, I've gotten a lot of requests for more low carb and keto recipes. And so I thought that New Year's Eve would be a great opportunity <laughs> to post one of those videos. And so I'm gonna be sharing some great recipes with you today. One thing that I wanna mention is that I don't ever share recipes with you all, especially freezer meal recipes that I haven't tried before myself. If it's something that I haven't made before I'm shooting the video, I actually cook it while I'm shooting the video and taste a portion of it. I think that's important because I don't wanna share recipes with you guys that I'm not quite sure how they're gonna turn out. I wanna make sure that I'm sharing quality recipes. I also just wanted to mention that even if you're not eating keto or low carb, please still uh, give this video a shot anyway. Like I said, many of these recipes can be modified if you want to add carbohydrates to your meal, but definitely these meals focus around protein and vegetables. So I just want to throw that out there in case the title you know, turns you off or anything. Um, I think these are all great recipes that anyone can cook regardless of their dietary preferences. So I wanted to quickly mention where I'm getting some of my inspiration for these recipes and I will either have them all typed out or the cookbooks linked down below. Uh, but this cookbook is from Erica over at Time to Shrink. I'll link her website where you can purchase this digital cookbook. I'm also using a recipe out of the Southern Keto Cookbook. I'm also using uh, a recipe from the Keto Made Easy Cookbook and the Simply Keto Cookbook. So quickly before I let you know what we're gonna make today, I also want to mention that today's video is in collaboration with my friend Christine over at Frugal Fit Mom. If you guys don't know Christine, she is hysterical. She is awesome. And she has a YouTube channel similar to mine. She's also a mom. She's got four kids. And she posts lots of great videos around home, food, fitness, and budget content. And so if you like my videos, I know that you'll love hers. She also has a great personality. She's funny. Her husband is funny, their whole family is just adorable. So today she's going to be sharing five freezer meals with you as well that are low carb. So make sure after you're done watching this video that you check out hers. What we are going to be making today is a keto lasagna. This is a tried and true recipe. I have made this previously when both my husband and I were on keto several years ago. And it's honestly really good. I can't hardly tell the difference between this and regular lasagna. I'm also going to be making a sausage Gruyere breakfast casserole. Uh, this is also really good. This is a meal that is great to make ahead and freeze in portions if you want to take it to work during the week uh, for breakfast. I'm also going to be making a Southwest Fiesta soup. This is a delicious recipe that can be done either in the Instant Pot or Crock Pot. I'm also going to be showing you some slow cooker pork carnitas. This is a great recipe also that uh, can be prepped ahead, put into the freezer, and on the day you're ready to cook it, just put it all in the slow cooker, and at the end of the day, you have a delicious meal. And then the last recipe is a broccoli and ground beef casserole. This recipe was probably the one that surprised me the most. It was totally delicious and I can definitely recommend it. With all that being said, let's get started. I'm gonna show you these five keto freezer meals. Don't forget when you're done watching to check out Christine's video and channel. I'll have that linked down below. All right, let's get started. All right, so this first recipe that we're gonna get started with is a, uh, a breakfast recipe, although I suppose you could use it for any meal. It is uh, sort of like a crustless quiche, and it is a sausage and Gruyere egg bake. So I think the thing that's unique about this particular recipe is that you don't actually use breakfast sausage, but you use ground pork and sort of make your own sausage mixture. So in the pan, I have some ground pork that I am sauteing. I'm mixing that with some green onions, some red pepper flake, 
some uh, cloves, just a tiny little pinch, and then some salt and pepper. And so I'm just going to let that saute until it is totally cooked through. And then the recipe also calls for adding some uh, marjoram and sage. That is what gives it the uh, breakfast sausage flavor. So once the pork was all cooked, I went ahead and removed it to a paper towel lined plate just so I could drain the grease off. It wasn't really um, that greasy to my surprise, so that was good. And then since I browned a pound and a half of pork, I only used half of it for this particular recipe and then I saved the rest in the uh, refrigerator and I'm going to use that for a different dish. So I just have a round casserole dish here that I sprayed with cooking spray. Um, you can put your ground pork on the bottom of that and then I'm mixing up some heavy cream with eight eggs and one cup of shredded Gruyere cheese and then I'm just going to kind of distribute that egg mixture evenly over the sausage and sprinkle the top with extra cheese and get that in the oven. So here's what it looks like when it's completed. This turned out really delicious. Uh, what you can do with this is cut it into individual servings and either put those in the refrigerator or the freezer and then when you're ready to take them out for breakfast they reheat beautifully in the microwave. So here, here's an example of just placing those in a container and I can take those out and take them to work for breakfast. Okay, so the next recipe is some pork carnitas. So what I'm going to start out by doing is making my dry rub for the pork shoulder. I'm going to place in a bowl some garlic powder, some chili powder, some cumin, and some salt. Now I'm doubling this recipe uh, just because I got a rather large uh, pork butt. I went ahead and split it into two just because we have a family of four and there's no way that we could have eaten all of that in one uh, meal. So I just have my pork that I split in half. Uh, I rinsed it and patted it dry and just put it on a sheet tray so I could easily season it. I'm also going to go ahead and cut off some of the fat on one of the pieces just because I did not uh, feel like I needed that and then just simply take your rub and rub it all over the outside of the pork until it is well seasoned. So um, the freezer meal component of this comes in where we're going to place both of these um, pork pieces into gallon size Ziploc bags and then put all the other components of the recipe into the bags and then you can just freeze everything together and when you're ready to make it all you have to do is pull it out in the morning. Usually I just run a little bit of hot water over the bag just to loosen it. Uh, put everything in the slow cooker frozen and cook it all day for 10 hours on low heat and it turns out delicious. So I have my seasoned pork in the Ziploc bags. I'm going to add some sliced onion. So two small uh, yellow onions onions that I'm slicing up to each bag. Next I'm going to add the juice of one lime to each bag. Uh, the next ingredient going into the bags is some chopped fresh cilantro. So I'm just dividing that up. Um, and then for this recipe, once it's cooked, you'll go ahead and shred it. And you can either serve this in bowls, like with um, lettuce, like a carnitas salad. And you could also do lettuce wraps, which is what I did. Or you could also use um, low carb tortillas. Or if you're not doing low carb, you could serve these on regular tortillas or rice as well. So to finish these off, I'm just pouring in one and a half cups of chicken stock into each bag. And then they're ready to go in the freezer. Super quick and easy and like I said just pull them out dump them in a crock pot uh, when you're ready to cook them. So here is uh, me in the morning just putting this into the crock pot. I'm just going to simply place all of the ingredients in there put the lid on and cook that on low for eight to 10 hours. So this is what it looks like when the pork is done. You can see that it has shrunk down quite a bit, but it is nice and tender. I was able to easily shred this with a pair of tongs. Um, and what I like to do is just take the roast out of the slow cooker, put it into a pan and let it cool until it's cool enough to handle. And then I'm using my fat separator to sort of strain off the rest of the broth so that I don't get all of that grease. And with my 
in with my meat. So I shredded the pork, put it back into the crock pot like you can see here, and then I'm just going to pour the rest of that broth back in just so the meat doesn't dry out. One thing I also wanted to mention is um, this recipe is from the Simply Keto cookbook by Suzanne Ryan, and you do have the option of removing some of the pork and putting it onto a baking sheet and crisping it up in the oven. Um, I did not do that step, but if you wanted a more authentic pork carnitas type feel, um, definitely feel free to do that. But like I said, I did not opt to do that today. So there is my completed meat. So I am serving this on some butter lettuce wraps with some shredded Monterey Jack cheese, some sour cream, cilantro, and sliced avocado. Super delicious. I cannot recommend this recipe enough. Okay, so next I'm going to show you guys how to make some keto lasagna. And like I said, I have used this recipe before and it is really good. I would recommend it. So since I'm going to make several freezer meals with ground beef, I'm just going ahead and sauteing it up all together in my Dutch oven. I have four pounds of ground beef in here that I am sauteing using salt, pepper, and a little bit of chopped onion. Once that's done, I went ahead and strained that. Uh, in a colander over a bowl to get the grease off. So for the lasagna noodles, they actually aren't noodles, they're made out of cream cheese, egg, um, Parmesan cheese, mozzarella cheese, and seasoning. And you bake them in the oven on a sheet tray um, until they get nice and brown and you cut them into strips that look like lasagna noodles but they're not actually noodles. I actually prefer this much better to um, like a zucchini lasagna because I think that Sometimes zucchini lasagnas can get um, watery, especially if you don't cook the zucchini beforehand. Um, I have made one before that I liked, but this recipe does honestly taste like a traditional um, lasagna recipe. So I'm just beating up my cream cheese, make sure that it's softened with my eggs in a bowl, adding the rest of my seasonings and Parmesan cheese. And then I'm going to add some shredded mozzarella cheese. You don't have to grate your own. Feel free to use uh, packaged shredded mozzarella for this. It works just fine. So once that mixture is combined, I have a large baking tray. This is um, twice the size of a nine by 13 pan. And I have a piece of parchment paper down I just sprayed that with cooking spray and then I'm going to spread that batter in a really thin layer on the parchment paper and bake this in the oven. Um, this step probably you know takes the longest but the nice part is is that you can make a few of these lasagnas and put them in the freezer for later use and then uh, you obviously don't have as much work the night when you're going to make them. So for the filling, I have in my Dutch oven uh, some marinara sauce. This is homemade marinara sauce that I had made this summer uh, with fresh um, tomatoes from the farmer's market, but feel free to use any type of um, tomato sauce that you like. And then I'm just adding the ground beef to that. Also for the filling for the lasagna, I'm using some ricotta cheese and some cottage cheese mixed together. I also season that with a little bit of Italian seasoning and pepper. The original recipe does not call for cottage cheese, it just calls for ricotta, but I find that mixing the cottage cheese with the ricotta makes it easier to spread and I like the taste of it a lot better. Okay, so here's a look at your faux noodles. Once they are done and out of the oven, I went ahead and let these cool before I cut them into strips. So definitely if you're gonna make these, um, make sure you use the parchment paper, otherwise you're gonna have a really tough time getting those out of the pan um, and cut up. And the nice thing about cutting your own sort of noodles is that you can cut them to fit the size of the pan that you're going to use. So for this particular recipe, instead of making like two big lasagnas um, or one big lasagna I'm actually going to split these up into some smaller loaf pans uh, you can get these at Dollar Tree I think I got these particular ones at Walmart but I'm just going to layer some of the meat sauce on the bottom of my loaf pans layer it with one of the low-carb noodles some of the ricotta cheese mixture some of the meat sauce and then a little bit of mozzarella cheese on the top just like you would a regular lasagna um, this particular recipe i found online and so i'll be sure to link it down below if you guys want to try it like i said it is sort of labor intensive uh, but honestly if you're doing low carb and you're missing like the taste of real lasagna this is definitely it um, like i said i have tried this many times and 
you, you cannot tell that much of a difference between this and regular lasagna with noodles. So here are my three completed pans of lasagna that I got. I'll go ahead and cover these with foil, pop them in the freezer, and then they will be ready to cook on a busy weeknight. So here's what the lasagna looks like when it's cooked up. Like I said, so, so delicious. I cannot rec recommend this recipe enough. Okay, so this next recipe is for a ground beef and broccoli bake. So we're gonna start out by making sort of a faux Alfredo sauce that is low carb, and that will be the sauce for this recipe. So to a small saucepan, I'm adding uh, a package of cream cheese, half a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then half a cup of heavy cream. And you just wanna let that simmer and stir it over low heat until everything is combined and the sauce is smooth. Uh, season it to taste with salt and pepper. I did not need a whole lot of salt, uh, but I did also put some pepper in it. And this is a really like rich and delicious, sort of like a dupe for an Alfredo sauce. Um, but this is really what makes this dish. This dish is so simple. And when I tasted it, I was like, oh my God, it's delicious. I can't, <laughs> I can't even believe how simple this was and how delicious it was. So in my uh, mixing bowl, I have a pound and a half of browned ground beef. I'm adding the Alfredo sauce to that. And then I cooked up a pound of frozen broccoli. I did not cook it until it was super tender just because this is going to go in the freezer and then you're going to bake it again. And you definitely don't want super mushy broccoli. Um, so I just have a small baking pan here. I'm going to put my ground beef and broccoli mixture uh, in there, spread it around so it's even. And then all you do is top this with mozzarella cheese and some red pepper flakes if desired. I did go ahead and put a few red pepper flakes on top of mine. Um, my kids don't like super spicy food, but the addition of a few isn't going to hurt. So I'm gonna wrap this up with foil, uh, label the top with what it is and the date. And then when I'm ready to cook this, I'll just thaw it out in the refrigerator uh, overnight and then throughout the day and then it'll be ready to go in the oven after work so here is what it looks like again not super impressive looking but i have to tell you this is delicious uh, definitely try it it is so good Okay, so the last recipe that I'm going to share is for a uh, Fiesta Mexican soup. And for this recipe, I have um, in a Ziploc bag a pound of ground beef that I have um, browned and drained, obviously. I'm adding in a can of Rotel and a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. And I'm also going to add one can of chopped green chilies. I use the mild ones just to make sure that it's not too, too spicy. Next, I'm going to add some ranch seasoning and taco seasoning. I'm using the taco seasoning from Fresh Jacks. Uh, they make awesome spices. You guys have heard me talk about them before. If you wanna check them out, I do have a link in my description box for a coupon code. And then the next ingredient is some cream cheese. So um, what you're going to do basically is combine all of the ingredients for this soup into a Ziploc bag and freeze it. And then when you're ready to cook it, you can remove it, uh, put it in a slow cooker and let it cook all day. Or you can also put it in an instant pot. So I added two cups of my homemade um, beef stock that I had thawed out. It was in the freezer along with some um, chipotle uh, chilies in adobo sauce and then I'm just going to label the bag. Uh, this particular recipe is from Erica's cookbook. She is Time to Shrink here on YouTube. I'll type the recipe out down below if you're interested in trying it. It's really, really good. Um, once the soup is cooked, you'll want to go ahead and add some shredded cheese to it. But here is what it looks like. I served it up with some avocado, some red onion, cilantro, and sour cream. Totally delicious. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for today's keto freezer meal video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you're planning on trying any of these recipes, please let me know which ones you're most excited to try. Like I said, they're all winners. They were all good. I have no complaints and would make all of them over again. Also, don't forget to check out Christine. I'll have her information linked down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.